going to put a disclaimer out right at the start of this video and my apologies, I hope it will not deter away from the information I wanted to provide with regards to the Orchid Lingo video coming up. I keep saying senescencing, please, please forgive me. At the point of editing, I realized that my dyslexia was getting the best of me and I was adding letters to the word senescing. So the information itself I find is still relatively valid. I cannot record it all over again because my weather is deteriorating. Forgive me, every time you hear senescencing, please, please forgive me. Know that the correct word is senescing. Again, my apologies, and I hope that the information provided is still valid. Thank you for understanding. Welcome to a video within the series of Orchid Lingo. Thank you so much for being here. Your time is so appreciated. Today's subject matter is the word senescence, or alternatively, senescing or senesce. We don't really hear this word as often as maybe we should hear it because it correlates with the word deciduous. But I wanted to bring some light into why there is such a thing as deciduous for kids, and that is because of senescence. So in order to get one thing out of the way, I thought I was going to address the actual name that brings us to why some of our orchids are deciduous and then fall into the category of winter resters. But you see, senescence is not just that. However, let's get into what senescence really is and how it goes across the board throughout our entire orchid collection. Let's look for the signs and let's differentiate between is it a good thing that it's happening or where are the danger points and how can we intervene when we see it happen where it shouldn't be happening. Senescence in general is the process of growing old. You got wrinkles, on your hands. Yep, senescence. Not nice. It is the process of aging, so you're welcome. With that being said, have a beautiful day. Please stay safe and take care. It's as simple as that, but if you want to stay on, thank you for your time if you're going to stick around for more details and examples. So we now know that senescence is the process of growing old. What really happens is a cell ages and permanently stops dividing, but it doesn't die, otherwise our deciduous orchids would be dead and we wouldn't see anything happening in the following months, spring and bloom for all those deciduous orchids where this applies. When senescencing starts in a natural form, it is the loss of chlorophyll that results in yellowing of the leaves which is the most obvious sign of senescence, and in some cases, the additional synthesis of anthocyanins during senescence results in very dramatic colors of orange and red, even sometimes purple coloration. And that is what happens when all the autumn colors start to come up, when the trees change their color. That is senescence in action. However, leaf yellowing is the first visible sign of senescence, but the chlorophyll levels start to drop well before the yellowing is clearly visible. Often the leaves do not senescence evenly. The tip and the edges usually show the first signs, with areas around the vein tissue and the end of the leaf being the last two senescence. So the reason for this is obvious if it is considered that the purpose of senescence is to remove soluble components from the leaf via the vein system before the leaf is allowed to die and drop off. The same process applies to spikes, not just leaves, spikes. That is why some growers do not cut their spikes until these are fully absorbed or only partially if space becomes an issue, if spikes that have bloomed out become more cumbersome. Some growers will swear by cutting spikes when the blooms have dropped, some growers won't cut their spikes until all the senescence process has taken place. You see, the proteins are degraded during leaf senescence to release valuable nitrogen and other minerals for mobilization. And that is also why a lot of growers say, I want my spike to be absorbed. There are nutrients in there and let the orchid absorb the spike on its own, draw in those nutrients. And then when the spike has dried off, it gets cut off because the orchid looks so much tidier without all these old dried up spikes everywhere. So senescencing has nothing to do with deficiency if it happens on the oldest structures of our orchids or if as the attribute of the orchid demands it, 
a certain time of year, senescencing will start because we call it a deciduous orchid very, very often, if not exclusively, to dendrobiums, which we then also term as winter resters. But senescencing doesn't happen just because of the natural trait of the orchid. Deficiencies of nutrients and pathogens doing damage to any structure of the orchid will induce senescencing as well. Sometimes we are quick enough to get the problem under control, correct it, and then the senescencing stops and we save the structure of the orchid. And sometimes we aren't. The cell structure's communication flow between the point of infection, for example, if it was done through a pathogen, some damage came into maybe a leaf, the stem, the rhizome, that senescencing can be irreparable. The cells are then destroyed because of the pathogens creating infections. It is the hardest part to stop because that starts rot. Mechanical damage may leave permanent damage on the structures of the orchid, cell collapse like, for example, sunburn, or in my case, cold damage. I've just noticed all of that on my Miltonia sunset. Cell collapse in that format can be stopped if we remove the threat of what we're doing wrong or what has happened to our orchid and the orchid can recover, but the senescencing process and the damage to the cell remains permanent as can be seen often when we burn our leaves, there is complete senescencing in that spot, but the orchid has been saved. When it comes, for example, to cold damage and cell collapse, the senescencing can increase until the tissue has dried out and died off completely, and we have removed the threat, for example, cold damage, or another example being rot, and getting rid of the pathogens as quickly as possible in the hope to stop the senescencing process. So senescencing is not a death threat to the orchid, even if it doesn't do it as a trait, even if it happens because of pathogens, or in my case, misjudgment of temperatures. It is not a threat to the orchid, but it can and will be if we don't remove the threat. Another thing that can cause senescencing is nutrient deficiencies. Very, very easy to see a difference when you look at a leaf that is new. If there's a magnesium deficiency, sometimes a nitrogen deficiency is also very, very easy to detect. Otherwise, there are certain things with orchids because of their slow metabolism that takes much, much longer to identify what the actual cause is. And then it takes a lot, lot longer to correct the cause when we recognize what it is, especially with magnesium deficiency. But senescencing can begin if we do not address that threat, if we do not start correcting by adding the nutrient that is missing, then long-term, it will be the process of senescencing that will take out that structure either partially or entirely. Now, again, in the case of rot, this can happen very, very quickly and we have to react quickly removing the threat, removing the rot, getting into clean tissue, applying cinnamon, and all that fun stuff when it comes to saving an orchid. When it comes to deficiencies, however, it takes a lot longer to correct. There is no quick fix. But we can stop the process of senescencing when it is about deficiencies. When it is about the trait of the orchid, embrace it. The orchid is doing what it's supposed to do, especially when it comes to temperature change especially with winter resting dendrobiums. There is nothing to worry about when you see your leaves go yellow. That is all part and parcel of what the orchid is supposed to do as she goes into the next stage of her grow cycle. You cannot correct senescencing by adding more water, by adding more fertilizer when it comes to winter resting dendrobiums or any kind of orchid that goes into a deciduous phase of the growth period no matter how much water you throw at it, no matter how much fertilizer you throw at it, the process of the orchid will continue, senescencing will continue. So even if you think you've made a mistake, don't worry, you have not done anything. It is a natural thing. Throwing too much water at it could rot roots. Throwing fertilizer at it when it's actually starting to go to sleep, also with catacetone, will rot roots. So senescencing is a natural thing that occurs in many of our orchids, including things like cattleyas as well as phalaenopsis, because 
they will lose the back structures as the orchid grows because the back structures become obsolete. They will lose lower leaves as the orchid grows because the lower leaves also become obsolete. Very quickly, an orchid will senescence its seedling leaves as the orchid matures because the function of those leaves have now been replaced with better, stronger, larger structures. There is no need for that. So senescencing is not a bad thing when you see it. It is part and parcel of an orchid being termed as deciduous, but the process of turning deciduous is senescence, and that can be a broad, broad term based on why is the orchid senescencing. Now, if, for example, a nutrient deficiency, senescencing isn't corrected as quickly as one would have liked, there will be damage around the cells. It'll be a permanent feature in the structure of the orchid, but it is not detrimental to the future health and continued growth of the orchid. So it's not something to worry about. Actually, if we see senescencing just because of a deficiency, or in my case, cold damage or sunburn, then we know, whoops, too much sun, move the orchid away, remove the threat, protect the orchid a little bit more. We have a blemish on the leaf. We have a nasty looking structure. We will have cell collapse, but at least the orchid will survive. So senescencing is not to be considered a bad thing. It is actually another signal from the orchid telling us it's on the right track in its growth pattern, or it needs help if it's not to decline or incur any further damage. So I hope that this was helpful. Now you know why your leaves are dropping at this time of year. And if it is not your part of the hemisphere that I'm talking about with leaf drop autumn, the orchids in question going dormant, but you're heading into spring, then please watch out for all the signs of senescencing I just mentioned, especially sunburn. <laughs> so you can see senescencing happens all year round, depending on the circumstances. And I hope that with this video, you have a better understanding of the word and why your orchid is doing what it's doing and how to counteract anything, intervene on time, and know that eventually certain structures will be covered in blooms when the time comes. If you have any questions with regards to the subject matter, if something wasn't explained clearly, then you know the drill. The comment section is always there for the dialogue, and I welcome the dialogue. I appreciate your time writing out your thoughts about this subject matter, and let me know if there's anything I can do to help to clarify any details that I may not have mentioned in this video. So, all the best to all the orchids that are senescencing at this point in time in the Northern Hemisphere. Enjoy the fall color in your collection, <laughs> if it is there for all the right reasons. Have yourselves a beautiful day, on one condition. Please stay safe and take care. Bye!